हेलो हेलो वेलकम टू दी ऑफल एंड ऑसम एंटरटेनमेंट रैप एपिसोड नंबर 264 माय नेम इज अभिनंदन सेखरी एंड आई एम निधि सुरेश एंड यू फीलिंग इन फॉर राजश्री सेन राजश्री सेन यू कांट बी एज मीन टू मी टुडे यू सेड यू वांट आई हैव आई सेड आई वांट आई हैव टू बी माय बेस्ट बिहेवियर बिकॉज़ इट इज टू बिग अ एज डिफरेंस and technically nidhi does report to me so yeah but jude told me not to consider you my boss for the next 45 minutes has jude and who are, <laughs> and who authorized jude to, to take that decision jude is the producer of this show clearly he is also reporting to someone else <laughs> but uh, yes please feel free to disagree and tell me what a boomer i am so nidhi who is our crack reporter in fact your reports gone out today the profile on navika on navika kumar uh where unfortunately we could never spend time with her or rahul shiv shankar but theek we do we we play with the hand we are dealt yes and, uh, and we've spoken to mul- and this is the second time actually we're doing a profile on someone who refused to speak to us they just we surya also didn't no one wants to speak uh, to news laundry to See, that's, <laughs> that's just the beauty of news laundry but thank you that we don't take any ads and you guys support us but nidhi is not here to talk about her reports for that you have to go to newsland.com and see what amazing spectacular reporting she does today she's doing something a little more frivolous which is co-hosting awful nonsense awesome entertainment rap so tell me nidhi what will you be telling us about and educating me on so i must give you the context of why i'm here in the first place and how i got here uh, last week uh, i spent a lot of time waiting for parikshit to work on our hatras documentary so i was waiting for him and i was in the new office and i was watching coffee with karan uh, and everyone was talking about how lame i am for watching coffee with karan but by in like 5 minutes everyone was also watching it with me uh which is when jude had the mind blowing idea that i should be on awful and awesome so with you i'm just making a note of what is happening <laughs> in the other office <laughs> i should make visits there little more often so everyone sits and watches coffee with karan yeah, when they are we had office. momos also and it's momos really <laughs> I have no idea this is what's happening clearly I, I'm <laughs> learning all sorts of new things about my own organization <laughs> but uh, so therefore Jude said why don't you talk about coffee with Karan yeah. so a uh, okay you'll talk like us about coffee with Karan I genuinely believe and I'm not just being you know facetious is the word I think it actually is not good for your brain no matter how smart you are no matter how much you think that you're in control exposing your mind to stuff like this deteriorates the mind i highly recommend you don't watch stuff like this and the other day when we were discussing it manisha and found me even she watches it regularly yeah i was like we are fucked news laundry is done if- no i think it's great actually i think it's for me at least it's an absolute pleasure to go home after doing all the reporting we do and watch coffee with karan which is mindless and it karan- doesn't mm-hmm. like it doesn't piss you off it doesn't make you like like it doesn't you don't feel it slowly not at all it. not at all i absolutely love the energy and i think it's great because we lack uh, uh, as many unabashed people as there are like karan is so unabashed and we're all craving for that especially in this time when you're expected to be so politically correct he uh, is politically correct well he tries to play it safe but he's also unabashed like his his aggression his elitism everything seeps through when he's talking so yeah okay i mean hmm So he can't hide it even if he does I, even if he wants to. I disagree. I mean mm, I mean I think he is a like he's a Donald Trump rolled, you know, into anyway, I'll I'll come up So with you've that. never watched it. I've never watched a full episode, I must admit. I've watched snippets 2 minutes here, 3 minutes there, 30 seconds here. I think I I've gone up to about 5 and a half minutes at most in mm. one sitting. I can't. It just None of the seven seasons, not even one episode fully. I've never watched a full really episode. That's really sad. Yeah. Have you watched Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Because it's kind of. I the tried. Same. I think we made it to seven minutes. You we made it to seven minutes. Yeah, we, we we tried to review it on this. Rajshri had suggested. Oh, it's the same. It's it has the same effect. You same know? energy. Yeah, same energy. Because it's about the idea is to make you think that you're getting some sort of insight into. The celebrity's life, which well, is obviously scripted. I just think I'm old. Scripted. I think I think it's just that, my. But that do you think about everything? That's true. I think about mm. everything. I think I was born old. Yeah, that's what <laughs> my sister said. In fact, so we're going to be talking about coffee with Karan. Why she watches it? You t- told us some. You'll tell us some more. Then I started watching a series called The Most Hated Man on the Internet. I will not review it, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Nidhi is going to tell us about worst person in the world and Malayan Kunju. Malayan Kunju. Malayan Kunju. Malayan Kunju. Start with saying Param. Param. 
Yeah, you can say that. That I can say. I can do. Malambura. Malambura. Huh, so Malangunya. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we have two ads. And because uh, we have a song, I must say Judas really packed the list today. And we have uh, uh, Rakhi. So we have some Rakhi commentary as well. <laughs> and uh, before we get into all that, can I please request you to subscribe and pay to keep news free? This episode is going to be free because it's my birthday day after tomorrow. Oh, really? And I can take such decisions. But I'm only making this free so that I guilt trip you guys into subscribing. Give me a birthday gift. Subscribe to News Laundry. We'll make this episode free. But reporters like Nidhi, producers like Jude, all the stuff we are doing requires resources and funds. And we don't take any ads. And as you can see, newspapers, news channels are full of Sarkari ads. Unless you make an effort to change the revenue model of news, news is not going to serve you. It's going to become the propaganda tool that it has become in the hands of, you know, a small select bunch of people, whether it be political organizations or corporate organizations. So click on the link below, pay to keep news free. And from next week, again, we'll take this behind the paywall. In fact, we'll only keep it outside the paywall for a week. After that, we'll pull this behind the paywall. Your birthday week. Birthday week. You're so, a Leo. <coughs> I'm a Leo. Leo the lion. Now it makes a lot of sense though. What does? The dialogue? No, no, that you're a Leo. Why? Because Leo is supposed to be headstrong, leaders, is that stubborn, right? angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told you're a very different person on this episode. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we shall not give away any more news on your secrets. Uh, you shall tell us about um, the worst person in the world. Uh, although you, yeah, brief me about it. It's it's an interesting concept. I think it. I've never seen. I'm not aware of any show that a film that deals with this. And I, I get a lot of people feel the societal social structures inhibit their gay abandon with which they'd like to conduct their lives and it guilt trips into them. So this film is about that. Sort of. It's a coming of age film. It's a Norwegian film. It was released in 2021, October, if I'm right. Uh, and it saw a lovely premiere at the Cannes, which received a lot of critical acclaim. Um, the film sort of revolves around this one woman, Julie. Uh, from So we follow her from the time she's 26 to the time she's 30, I believe. So it's the last, her transitioning from a late 20 to early 30 year old. And, it starts with this scene where you see her, you know, standing in the back. Behind her is Oslo, the city of Oslo. And she's standing in this, she's a beautiful woman. She's standing in a black dress, smoking a cigarette. And what you see is a very self-assured young woman who, you know, is, seems to be able to find her way through the world. But through the movie, which is divided in about 13 parts, uh, you see her going through, you know, different professions, different men, uh, and constantly sort of trying to understand what she wants, especially as a modern woman. And I completely relate to this. You know, you're constantly trying to find your identity in your job and the people who love you and trying to, you know, feel validated by all of these things around you. Uh, it can get very confusing. And she's sort of navigating through all this. And every time she takes a decision for herself, which can come across selfish, she feels like the worst person in the world. Uh, so the movie sort of looks at that and where she kind of ends up arriving at the age of 30. There isn't a big climax, but it's more this journey that so it's you know, she goes through. caters to the self-indulgence of Zoomers. Okay, but tell me, before, actually I wanted to ask you this, before we go into this generational <laughs> uncle <laughs> talk <laughs> that you will do. <laughs> that is exactly what the film is not about. Have you watched it? No, I'm just saying. You're infamously <laughs> underprepared for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. So I wanted to ask you, what were you doing when you're 26? And don't tell me you were working a lot and on Mira Nair's set. Like, what were you feeling and doing? What was I feeling? 26, I was feeling, have I taken the right decision in quitting my job and, and trying to start a company of my own? All the channels were launching uh, because I was one of the early entrants into the media space. You were constantly wondering, should I, uh, you know get a job in one of these channels because there were good, great jobs available. I was uh, getting a little more confident in my physicality and, and my just, you know, that the awkwardness was gone. I still hadn't completely thrown off, like, 
I really don't give a fuck about, you know, what I wear or what I drive or how rich someone is. I was still a little self-conscious of that because I had a lot of friends who were insanely rich. So sometimes the social space you were in was not where I was from. So that self-consciousness was there, but it had begun to, uh, I had begun reaching the, I don't give a fuck, but I wasn't there yet. When did you get there? I think I got there by my uh, early 30s. So I it's think. that like late 20s to early 30s. Late 20s, early phase. 30s. I really, I, I couldn't give a shit whether I was talking to, you know, a mm. billionaire or uh, this thing. Mm. But yeah, that time it was, I was self-conscious. Yeah, so it, it actually taps into that sense of self-consciousness. It's not self-indulgence. It talks about this feeling of being self-conscious and mm -hmm. how you deal with that. Like one particular... No, but for women, it's very different. I think for women, every... Um, intimacy that you entertain or encourage imposes a guilt on you for men the guilt is of a different sort if i'm not making it materially in life i'm letting down my family i mean even men have pressures yeah. and they are significant yeah. but i think for women but for men to encourage or you know kind of indulge themselves in intimacy doesn't lead to a guilt trip hmm. with women it does and it's tricky because today's woman or the age that I see myself in you're a lot more away from family right like you live alone you're, you're financially independent you're trying to make ends meet so that sense of physical guilt is not there because you're not around that same mm -hmm. environment and you are sort of starting to train yourself to think you're independent you're going to have a career and this is what you should focus on but you have internalized so much of this mm -hmm guilt and so much of these thought processes like I mean I'm in my late 20s now and I somewhere do start thinking of motherhood mm -hmm. but that's the fight I was having with my parents that I don't want to be thinking of this but now they're not around their voice is not around but they're in my head so you still mm -hmm. keep kind of going through that same cycle so is it a chick flick not at all. Okay, it's not. Not at all. Men will also identify with it. Absolutely. I think men will because the story is as much about uh, her as much as it is about the men in her life and the and and the journey they are on with her as well because she falls in love with someone who's much older to her at a point when you know she's professionally confused and seeks a lot of validation from this older man who seems to find value in her uh, which happens a lot when you're young and you want you know people to like you and see value in you and it's how this man also changes through this time so i highly right. recommend you watch the movie okay so that's one good recommendation okay so now let me tell you about what I watched. It's a, called The Most Hated Man on the Internet. I'm curious about documentaries as my preferred go-to, um, you know, format. So I was keen to watch it because I had heard that, it, you know, it's really disturbing the kind of shit people do. So I'm not, you know, first I thought I won't mention it at all because mm. people will end up watching it. I had a d serious problem with it and I, I don't know whether it's just me I'm just over analyzing it. I just found it exploitative. It's about this guy called, what's his name? Hunter Moore or something. Uh, Hunter Moore. He's a despicable, horrible man who started a website for revenge porn. So, you know, if, you know, guys who've been dumped or they'll hack into accounts and even of men, they'll, you know, apparently, you know, <laughs> I found this quite funny. There was this guy who was talking, you know, like you're flirting on the internet and then you just send a chick a dick flick, a dick pic. I was. <laughs> Since when did that become like a thing? So she's like, you know, what is your zodiac sign? Let me read your palm. Yeah, I'll send you a dick flick. So I thought, okay, maybe that, it's that a is... a dick pic. Uh, dick pic, sorry. Yeah, maybe our rivaz badal gaye. Our rivaz alag hoti. But I found that ridiculous. But even guys who've done that, they'll put that up. And how it destroys, you know, young girls' lives, you know, in a, a moment of trust or indulgence. So it's, he set up a website and he was profiting off that. But I thought the documentary series was doing what he was doing in a more sophisticated manner. I, I just mm. thought one interview really disturbed me. And I thought it was very exploitative, that interview. Uh, maybe, th and that woman was clearly messed up in the head. A, to do the kind of stuff that she did earlier. Two, to do the interview. And because she had kids who at some stage would watch that interview and watch that, it just, I found it really fucked up so I couldn't watch it anymore. So don't watch it. <laughs> but in case you meet Hunter Mo anywhere, uh, this is a guy who needs to be dealt with in the old-fashioned way, not 
in the what new ways. Justice was instant when I was young. Hmm. <clears throat> when I was in college, you fucked up. You had a few things broken. No one went. It's a very real anxiety, though, especially it's, today. It's shocking the kind of stuff yeah. that just went. So, I just found it very disturbing. And this is the thing: I went back home and I was watching it at night, and I was like, "Yeah, I can't watch this. It, it mm. was too much." Uh, yeah, very, very, very sad. But we're also going to talk about, by the way, fashion. <laughs> you know, because obviously, who else? We talk about fashion as the one person who wears the same thing every single day of his life. Yesterday you were black on black. I'd never seen you on black on yeah, black. Yeah, I, I wore a black pattern suit yesterday. I yeah. th- I usually wear those in the evening, but yesterday it, it was just like <laughs> this. I wore it. <laughs> what logic is it? Why? <laughs> what is it? As the sun goes down, your <laughs> kurta changes. <laughs> in the heat, you're not going to wear a black pattern suit, na? <laughs> so hot in Delhi. <laughs> so winter you wear black. In winter, sometimes but I wear black only at night for dinners and all. So, <laughs> so now tell us about morning. <laughs> yes, tell us. Morning. Malayang gunya. Okay, why not? Yeah. <laughs> no, I want you to say. Malay gunya. One time I get to do this. Malay <laughs> gunya. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> this, what's the film about? <laughs> is Malayangunya basically he means uh, son of the mountain hmm. and uh, the it's a Fahad Fasil lead movie it's actually a Fahad Fasil movie a Malayalam movie and first time A.R. Rahman is compu- composing music after 28 years in Malayalam cinema okay uh, and apparently he was pushed by Fahad Fasil uh, to compose music for this movie even though he didn't have time hmm. uh, so the movie I mean, Malayalam cinema itself in the last few years has been really going through this sort of change on camera and off camera when it comes to misogyny, uh, this sort of male ego. We've seen movies like Kumbhlangi Nights. Have you seen it? Yeah. Great Indian Kitchen. You Great reviewed Indian. it. Yeah. Reviewed as well. Yeah. So in this movie too, we see sort of, and there's all the other things that are happening off camera with the Me Too movement, which started much before the Weinstein movement in hmm. Malayalam cinema, which actually started in Kerala. With Dilip's case and everything. Um, so in this movie too, you see Fahad Fasil, he's a technician. He basically repairs laptops and sits in his room, wakes up at three in the morning. And he is frustrated with his life. He's annoyed. Uh, and this isn't a spoiler, but his father basically committed suicide. That's okay. Our audience is used to spoilers. Ajah, haan, Jesh, I know Rajshri, Rajshri gives a lot of spoilers. And you haven't watched it, so you wouldn't know. Mm. <laughs> so... Um, Fahad Fasil is a technician and he's very frustrated with his life and he sort of also has this uh, feeling of belonging to his place, which is very strong. So he's very possessive about his land, his home, his house, a lot more than his people. Hmm. Uh, and he is, you can see that he's a very casteist man. So he's a, he's very angry with the fact that his sister went away with someone who's not from the same caste. Hmm. So he doesn't speak to her. He's a very difficult man, struggles with vulnerability, speaks to his mother very rudely and the interval sort of arrives at a cliffhanger where there's a landslide. So throughout the film, you know that the landslide is coming because Mm. people around are saying, you know, we should move to the camps and everyone's leaving. But Fahad Fasil is like, no, I don't give a shit. I'm not moving. This Mm. is my place. And when the landslide occurs, the second half of the movie is actually very claustrophobic because you just see this man sort of struggling to come out. So he's been... He's under. Okay, okay. And Mm. there's almost like four or five dialogues in the second half of the movie and only Malayalam cinema can pull off an almost art movie as a commercial cinema yeah I think Malayalam cinema is by far head and shoulders above sorry to you know interrupt but a lot of our Kannadiga audience have sent me some messages in the past that I'm illiterate but the the Kannada films I see are very Bollywood so I, I really don't think I mean Raj Molly is a Karan Johar. Hmm. It's Kannada, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't watch Kannada cinema, so I don't know much. Now you're going to get hate also. It's from <laughs> Kanir. But yeah, Malu cinema is, I think, Why haven't others. you made a Malu playlist then? You've only made a Punjabi playlist. I've made a playlist? Haven't you made some song playlist? of, Or you're either singing all the time. Yeah, Punjabi I sing music. Punjabi songs all the time. You never put any effort to learn or sing. But I don't Malayalam. understand Malayalam. Haven't you ever had a Malu girlfriend? Everyone in Delhi has had a Malu girlfriend. Can we just stick to the... <laughs> 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 you know, Malus are everywhere. No? <laughs> See, uh, Jude has at told least, me you're not my boss today. At least I could shut down Rajshri. 
ट him under plans like yeah yeah and it's it it i was just reading up that okay. they couldn't even shoot with a stunt double because it's so close up like mm. it's the camera is in his face and he actually sustained injury and had to go through surgery cuz it it's really it's really intense like he's really under okay. and there's some very intense this i have scenes. to watch seems very interesting film okay. yeah and the idea sort of is to come th- to this point where the landslide and this tunnel that he's sort of mm-hmm. trying to go through is symbol emblematic and i mean uh, symbolic of, of his mother's umbilical cord at least this intense or yeah the intense bit <laughs> heavy ho gaya hmm <laughs> See, we do very serious work at news laundry i'm not used to this frivolous thing that you do <laughs> I see. Okay, but this so, uh, this guy has just taken the country by storm. Everyone's talking about him. You know, you know all the who I really like, and I'm so bad with names. Is the guy who was in uh, Sudani from Nigeria. Mm. He was also in Robot. And in Virus. Uh, yes, yes, he's. Uh, yeah. I find him really good. He's an amazing actor. I'm just wondering what he just his becomes name was. the character. Hmm. I'm. For- he was in Kumlangi Nights as well. I'm forgetting his name. I'm trying to think. Did I watch Kumbhlingi Nights? But by the way, I'm just curious to know what did you think of the Great Indian Kitchen? Because, you know, I, I'm curious. Yeah, I thought the movie. Uh, I liked the first half. I didn't like the ending. The ending for me was similar to like you know, lipstick under my burqa, where these women smoke a cigarette and they are liberated. Okay. Uh, in this also, she kind of spits out something. She throws the. food at him or something like that and she leaves and, and no, the end is that she's choreographing that song huh. that the dance sequence with but her. she leaves home after yeah. doing something right uh, symbolic mm-hmm. right uh, so that kind of i get a little annoyed with because that doesn't really happen mm. like all of the other things especially the scene where you know the Kachira father-in-law is mm. putting oh the bones oh my god it hap- it really happens mm. and i've seen like generations of women in my family sort of pick up after mm. these uh, after mm. men and clean the table and it's just disgusting mm. so you that disgust is really well uh, brought out because of the number of times they repeated right uh, in the cinema so i think that's great you know i thought the most from a feminist point of view a really phenomenal ending of a film was arth i, I actually haven't seen, seen it shabana azmi uh, shabana azmi uh, kulbhushan kharbanda where he comes back to her at the end and uh you know the assumption is either she would you know hook up with uh, raj kiran who is the younger man in love with her and fatuated by her that you know because he sees that she's going through a problem with her marriage and her husband is such a dick and in the end either she'd go to raj kiran or mm. when he comes back saying i'm sorry take me back she'd say okay she says no and that's the end that she doesn't want him or him mm. i thought that was and it was made in the 70s i think it's i mean that was pretty phenomenal i thought that as an end it wasn't unrealistic yet it was not the bhai to complete her life she has to hook up with one of them hmm. i love that was good surprisingly i watched uh, did you see jug jug jio that new uh, anil kapoor what was it varun dhawan kiya radwani i just what do you think i do at news laundry just i just want to know cuz i yeah, assume a lot you of do you think a i have a lot of time where you review films <laughs> So I'm hoping that you're watching and not just giving us gyan about prepare and don't wing it. <laughs> oh dear God! Okay, huh? No, I haven't seen Jug Jug. Everything three years after. The <laughs> Bada ass is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll tell us about Jug Jug Jee, yeah. but only in the audio-only version. That's it for the video version. To listen to the full podcast, I would recommend download the app for the most friction-free experience. Check out our other podcasts. Let's talk about hafta, charcha, daily dose, uh, news portly, and many more. Uh, and thank you for your support. The rest of this podcast is audio only. The subscription model is something that keeps news on your float, but we need hundreds and thousands of people to completely transform the news ecosystem. So you pay for news, so it serves you. So click on the link with this video, subscribe to News Laundry, and pay to keep news free. Or garf se kaho. मेरे खर्च पर आजाद है 
खबरें